Imagine a year when Australia helped NASA get to the moon. Ah, oh, so 1969? No, more important than that, the movie. The year is 2001. One, 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 one. And welcome to Oldie Butter Goody, the podcast talking about movies from 2001 in the order they came out in. My name is Sandro, and joining me as always is Zucky Boy. Oh, how's he going, Sando? It's me, Zucky Boy. <laughs> Our resident uh, spatial engineer, here to help with today's... Uh, voyage into the stars. Oh, bugger me with a tinny. That is correct, <laughs> mate. Oh, we are going into the stars. Well, that's the idea. We've got to find more resources. Earth's, Earth's running out of beer. We gotta go look for the. We gotta go look for more resources in the stars. We've run out right? of all the ingredients for beer, and specifically making the tins to contain the beer. So we gotta <laughs> go into space to find more tin. If, they, if, they, if, uh, if Earth ever ran out of tin, Australia would be the number one country <laughs> with a space program within. I'd say two months. Exactly. They would have working rockets. Which which big beer brand would sponsor the mission, though? Would it be Colton? Oh, I feel like it would be Colton Draft. It, it would be... Oh, they would have multiple beers, I think. Mm. You could have... Oh! Although you could have, like, the rockets, but instead of just, like, logos, you could have an entire rocket painted as a giant VB long neck oh, blasting <laughs> off into <laughs> the stratosphere. <laughs> now, that's how Australia would make their mark on the future. <laughs> Sending big old long necks into the stratosphere. This week we are reviewing the classic Australian comedy, The Dish, about the moon landing and stuff. Because, uh, yeah, every week we talk about movies from 2001. And this one came out this week. And we were like, we can't pass up on an Australian true blue classic. Yeah. And this was a comedy? I thought this was just an irregular Australian <laughs> true story life. It was pretty much exactly what life is like down here on the ranch. I mean, there wasn't much different. Pretty accurate, especially the Prime Minister. The yeah. Prime Minister was like, is that ScoMo? I think that's yeah, ScoMo. Yeah, no. That was, he, he wanted stuff uh, from the top shelf, you know? Yeah. That, like, that was a true ScoMo move right there, you know? <laughs> I, I was impressed. I was like, this is very realistic. It was. And that's, that's the interesting thing. Uh, in comedy, sometimes they can be more real. Than, than the, the lifelike movies. Yeah, Just, that's a good point. That's a good point. I mean, look, most of this movie is fictional. Uh, mm. The characters aren't based off real people. Yeah. Uh, they're just kind of based around real events. But um, I, I realised while watching this, I have seen this before, but I saw it when I was in primary school and I couldn't remember it. And back then ah. I, I had no s sense of humour, so I probably thought this was like a hard-hitting documentary <laughs> or something, so I got bored. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. You were like, holy crap. Those guys nearly died. That security guard should have been fired. He was a, he was a safety hazard to all around him. Oh my god. Yeah, but no, I'm glad that I finally rewatched it, and I think this is a really solid movie. Uh, very good Australian comedy as well. What did you think of it? Oh, I thought it was brilliant. If if you haven't watched it, you you need to go watch it. Yeah. Spoiler: Don't listen to this podcast. Just <laughs> delete. Delete this podcast off your your downloaded podcast. Mm -hmm. Go watch the movie. Realize it was fantastic. Be thankful for that. Yes. Come back, download the episode, listen to it twice. Then listen again. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, I would say check this out. I don't know. I, it's pretty easy to find in Australia because everyone in Australia loves this movie. It's on Netflix here. I mean, it's a great Australian movie. Yeah. It's it's made by Australians, stars a New Zealander. It stars a New Zealander and an, an American in the lead roles. What's more Australian than that? <laughs> But yeah, oh, Sam Neil, Sam Neil. Oh, I love everything he's in. You do love the old Sammy. I, lo I love most of the cast from Jurassic Park. You do. 
I want to go through, hang on, I'm just going to quickly get up the list of films we've done this year, because Crossfire Trail, Goddess of 1967, Valentine, and now this, all directed by Australians. Yeah, yeah, and I think the reason is it's because it's more of a modern year. Mm. There's just more, because, uh, like, a, the Australian film industry didn't really get kick-started till more recent years, so... Mm. I mean... Like, there were Australian films. Yeah, like, Razorback and Dark Age are some of the most fun yeah. movies we've done from Australia. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It just wasn't as big, you know? It wasn't as common. So you didn't get these big, giant actor... Huge comedy, true life movies till till about two thousand and one. I'd say till two thousand two thousand one, and then we don't get them anymore. <laughs> They're all from Oof. New Zealand now, which is fine, I guess. Uh, which is fine. Oh Look, shit, it's here. Uh, New Zealand has some great. Uh, what a wilder people. Wilder I will, people. I will really good shrimp for that movie because it was fantastic. I love it. Also starring everyone's favourite Sam Neill, yeah. who I think really shines as an actor in that one. He does. That's one of his best movies ever, I reckon. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But yeah, uh, we'll jump into the dish in just a second. Zach, things to mention up top. Number one, uh, new Patreon episode is out. It's out right now. Mm. It's a bonus battle between Uncharted and Resident Evil 7. Welcome to Raccoon City, except it's a reboot. You were intoxicated for the entire episode. I wonder if you can listen to it <laughs> and figure that out. Well, yeah, it won't be obvious. Well, who was it? Um, Tom, not Holland, Tom... Tom Hopper. Is it Hopper? Tom Hopper. Yeah, Tom Hopper. I was simping hard for him. You ah, were... Shrimping hard for him. You were sh- sh- shrimping very hard for Tom Hopper. He's, he's a fuzzy, uh, cuddly, large man, I would say, you know? I just love those big muscly ape arms of his, you know? Yes. Although he didn't have them in Resident Evil. He had his human arms. I'm sure with a bit of Resident Evil corruption uh, umbrella stuff, they can absolutely add that in the next film. Definitely. This was more like an origin story. I feel like this is going to be connected to Umbrella Academy. It's going to be... What? Umbrella Corporation? Umbrella Academy? Just saying? Yeah, you know what? I would watch that. The Resident Academy. I don't know. The Resident Academy. Yeah, Resident Academy. Anyway, that very long bonus battle is up on Patreon right now. Or Umbrella Evil. Umbrella Evil? I feel like that's... <laughs> that's a little on the nose, isn't it? That's a little on the nose. <laughs> yeah, it's getting straight to the point. <laughs> oh, dear. Tom Hopper versus Tom Holland. Who wins? Find out. Patreon.com forward slash oldie but a goodie pod. It depends on the battle. If it's like a physical battle, I feel like... Oh, I know, uh, Tom Holland's pretty fit. Yeah, he'd be good at, like, dodging, but yeah. I feel like he'd get tired really quickly. Mm, uh, it depends. If there's, like, a big arena, like a parkour arena, mm. I feel like he could parkour around to- Tom Hopper. I mean, Tom Hopper could follow him, but he- he's going to have the upper hand there. You know? He will, he will. But if it's in a boxing ring, Tom Holland is knocked out within, like, 30 seconds. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's got, he he dodges like two punches and then takes one to the chin and he's done. Yeah, absolutely done. Read my fanfic. Oh. <laughs> Your fanfic, Tom Hopper, ver- oh, it w- would just be called like Hopper versus Holland, wouldn't it? No, oh, it's the uh, uh, Tom v. Tom. Tom v. Tom, Dawn of Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What were the other movies that came out this week that I could have chosen? Oh, yeah. So we had uh, Ealing. A 40-year-old guy has been sheltered by his mother his entire life. When she dies, his life is turned upside down. Hmm. Uh, Enemy at the Gates follows the life of a Soviet sniper during World War II. I think that stars, uh, what's his name? Jude Law, who is yeah. Dumbledore in oh, wow. The Secrets of... I'm not going to watch it. Nice. I'm sorry. I'm not watching Fantastic Beasts 3. I won't do it. Yeah. You can't make me. Look, I liked the first one, and then the second one was a movie. Uh, was it? Or was it just, just an ad for this one? Oh, um, anyway, Enemy at the Gates. <laughs> it was too depressing, I think, for our thing, because it was very gritty and realistic, and probably wouldn't have been good with the climate we're currently dealing what with. What are you have- talking about? This is an evergreen podcast. Nothing's happening in the world right now. Everything yeah, is, is fine. fine. <laughs> there's there's oh, nothing wrong no. in Barsing Say. <laughs> Exit Wounds. It's about a cop who's known for pushing the limits. 
and uh, the late great rapper DMX was in it. Ah, I heard that he might give it to you. Yes, or deliver it to you. Or, or deliver it to you, yep. And then we have uh, Memento, Christopher Nolan's breakout movie about a guy who loses his memory every 15 minutes. Just like Full Metal Jacket, we've got to do that on Patreon this year, because that's a very yeah, yeah. important and great movie. Um, oh, okay. But yeah. the way that it, the story plays out, terrible for this podcast and the way right, that we do yeah. things. Because <laughs> so. we'd have to try and, like, explain everything. Yeah. It's like, all right, here's the bit here that explains why in this scene, this person said this to this character, which we didn't know here, but he learns about here. But in the later scenes, he forgets about it, so he doesn't Mm. remember that. Yeah. Exactly. And that would just be the whole episode. Every, like, minute we would have to go on a tangent to just explain what's going on. Yeah, and we wouldn't be able to get any jokes in. It would just be a bad time for all involved. So, a regular episode. <laughs> but um boom tsh But um tish. The dish. Ooh. But um boom the dish. Speaking of the dish. The dish. So, it was released in Australia, October of the year 2000. Wait. But of course, before you get your pitchforks out, yeah, we usually go by the American release date, which is March 14th, 2001. Oh, oh, I was about to say, wait, this movie did come out in 2000. What are you doing, Sandra? Yeah, yeah. Well, what are you doing? It sounded like you just shoehorning in good movies so that we can <laughs> just watch good movies because we've only watched crappy kids films so far this year. A lot of it has been, well, aside from the two Australian movies, this one and The Goddess of 1967, they've all been kids movies pretty much. Yeah, you've just been shoehorning. Shoehorning shoehorn in an Australian movies to cleanse your palate <laughs> of the Disney film. Well, the thing is, uh, I get the list of when movies come out. I get it from a, web- a website that only lists American release dates. So when I saw this was on there, I went, well, if they've got it listed, I can probably get away with it too. Mm, mm, absolutely. And you know what? I'm not going to argue because I wanted to watch this film. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad I did. And none of the other options were like, great. So, you know. <laughs> and I and I mean, uh, in law canon, we are two time travellers travelling back to America. Yes. To watch... The films as they came out with. In America. In America, yes. Sometimes we go to Canada for a film festival. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, So this was directed by Rob Sitch. Uh, A few years earlier, in I think it was 97, he directed another classic Aussie comedy called The Castle. Uh, Huge success, shot in Melbourne. Uh, If you haven't seen it, watch it. One of the best Australian comedies. Mm. Um, I would personally say better than this. Oh, okay. But... They're on par. They're both very good. They're both very good. This is this is very wholesome, though. How wholesome was that movie? The castle is more like a joke per minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. This was a very, like, low-key sort of wholesome film. Yeah. This is a film you put on with your grandma, you know? Oh, your grandma would love this. And she finds it goddamn hilarious. She's like, oh, that funny Sam Neill. Oh, he's <laughs> such a cheeky young man. So Rob, he co-wrote it with Jane Kennedy, Santo, Solaro, and Tom Gleisner, who is actually the current host of Have You Been Paying Attention, and a very wonderful man. I have actually met him once. <gasps> Whoa! Wonderful human being. They are all regular collaborators. They do heaps of stuff together. Uh, they also all wrote The Castle. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. Great group of Australian comedic wow. writers. That's very cool. Although when you say that you write it, you mean they just transcribed from the true story yes. that was there word for word, yes? All, everything in this movie is historically accurate. <laughs> Excellent. Shall we get to that now? What is and isn't? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Could you tell me? I don't know, so. None of the characters are real. Maybe the names are like nods as well to real people. But yeah, there wasn't only four guys in the dish during the mission. Yeah. There were heaps more, like, NASA people there. Uh, And also, the events are very much dramatised. The stuff at the end of the movie with the high winds, that's real. Yeah. Everything else is purely for for comedy gold. What uh, what about the... uh, Spoiler, again. Spoilers. Go watch... Go watch... Go watch the movie. It's really good. If you haven't paused and uninstalled uh, your podcasting app... Most of them are websites. I don't know how you can... Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I I, I don't know. If they're on an, an Apple... Oh, uh, they can't in- uninstall. Throw out your phone. Yep. 
and your computer. Throw it in the trash. Keep keep your screen though. Get a DVR player and use the screen from your old computer on the DVR player. Get an original signed copy of, of the dish. videotape of the movie. Watch the movie. Mm. And then uh, buy a new computer and or phone device, reinstall, download the podcast, listen to the podcast. That's what you should do before you give away the spoiler that you've no doubt forgotten what you were going to say. No, no, no. It was it was to do with a power outage. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Was that a real life event? Nope. Very good. Nope. They might have lost track of the Apollo at some point, but no, that's not uh, real. Mm. Um, although, stuff that is very accurate is a lot of the machinery they used... Because it's actually the actual equipment from the Apollo 11 landing that they used. Ah, yes. Very good. The reason why they used it is because the equipment was left here in Australia because NASA said it was too expensive to ship back to America. So they just left it here and then they used it for the movie. Also, you can go to parks. I've been there. Oh, you've been there? Have you been in the satellite? I don't think you can go in, but you can kind of like walk around and see where they shot the movie. Did you walk around it? I walked around. I walked around. I pointed it up and I went, that's a massive dish. It's a massive dish? It's a big dish. Does it look like the movie dish? Yeah, well, it's it's the same dish. (laughs) Is it the same same dish? Oh my God, it's the same dish? You could be like Sam Neill sat there once when they they filmed some scenes. Oh my God, yes. And they they did a a hay lift. The hay lift where you sit on the dish and it goes up into the sky. Or you could play cricket on it. You can play cricket on the t- <laughs> And I was like, yeah, you know what? That's exactly what they would do. That's a great place to play cricket because it's angled. So if you th- if you threw the ball away, it would roll roll down back towards you. Exactly. I like that one scene where the cricket ball just fell out <laughs> yeah, of the sky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that was very funny. That sort of uh, shotgun on the mantelpiece there. That was great. Yeah. Just this random tennis ball I was not expecting. That was quite funny. But yeah, if you are in Australia on the East Coast, you can definitely go visit parks. If you watch the movie, you want to go there, which is pretty cool. So first, whatever you do, sell your house. Get rid of all your technology. Use the money, buy a plane ticket to Australia. Australia. Once the borders are open. Yep. Go, yeah, no. (laughs) Take an illegal plane trip. (laughs) Or... Potentially just isolate for two weeks. You can do that. uh, Depending on the current laws. Then uh, go to the telescope, take pictures, take notes, listen to like a tour guide, Mm. get the law from that. Then read um, a book about it. I'm sure there is one somewhere. Google it. Go on Wikipedia. Obviously, you can't because you sold everything. So you have to buy a phone. Do that. Make sure to avoid downloading. Then uh, take a flight back, try and find some affordable housing. Realize now that you've sold, you cannot afford any of the housing because in that two weeks of quarantine that you took, uh, housing prices skyrocketed. skyrocketed. Be homeless, use the amount of money you have left, buy a new burner phone, download the podcast, listen to the podcast. Wait, did they watch the movie in that? I don't think they did. Ah, it doesn't matter. Uh, who cares? Anyway, the cast. This stars Sam Neill as Cliff Buxton. What a name. Cliff Buxton. You already mentioned it. He's from Jurassic Park. Uh, Hunt for the Wilder People in the Mouth of Madness is a great horror film that he's in that I really like. Mm. Uh, he is from New Zealand, not Australia, but his accent was pretty good. So good on him. I feel like New Zealand's can, can do a good Australian's. But we can't do a good New Zealand accent. Oh, I don't know about that, brew. I don't know, brew. I can do a pretty good <laughs> New Zealand accent. I'm from New Zealand, brew. And also, I still say uh, six, Mark like six. People get confused at my work uh, when I say a six pack because I'm selling alcohol and people go, a what now? A what? This place is a front for a... <laughs> I'm like, no, this is 1972. All right, calm down. <laughs> we don't need fronts for those. We could be pretty open about it if we're doing that sort of thing. No. It doesn't help that I have the mask on. The mask sort of blur the words as well. No, it happens to me all the time. I'm walking around and I'm like, oh... Fucking shit. But with my mask on, it sounds like I'm saying fucking sheep. And everyone's like, you're a New Zealand mate. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> no, mate. No, mate. Actually, I was just swearing like an Aussie. Don't worry. That, that's not a real scenario in New Zealand. Um, because 
uh, most Australians also like to fuck sheep. So. Yes, also, especially if you live in Tasmania, which isn't really a part of Australia. We just pretend that it is. I was about to say, I was about to say, thank God. <laughs> you were about to say that <laughs> Tasmania was part of Australia? <laughs> Good Lord. They're not, they're not. Well, the, the, they were... For, like, the important stuff that happened there. <laughs> yeah, but once yeah, important yeah, stuff yeah, stopped yeah. happening on Tasmania, we just disowned them. <laughs> when did important stuff happen in Tasmania? Oh, the movie The Nightingale is set there. It's a pretty good film. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's part of Australia. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's an Australian film. All right, Patrick Warburton is in this. He plays Al, the American from NASA. He's from Seinfeld. He's the tick. He's Kronk in Emperor's New Groove. Yeah, dude, the tick. He, he's the live action one. He's not the old cartoon one, which is the best version. Sorry, Neil. But that is true. Still, I do love the tick. Um, he's in uh, a series of unfortunate events. Yes, he's Lemony Snicket. Yeah. That's a good show. Tom Long and Kevin Harrington also played the other two workers, Glenn and Mitch. They were both on a popular Australian show called Sea Change. The mayor of Parks, Mr. Bob, is played by Roy Billing. He's been in the Jack Irish TV show, apparently, which is hmm. good. And finally, Australian stage icon Billy Brown is the Prime Minister. Mm. Definitely not based off the actual Prime Minister at the time, who was an old man. <laughs> no, no. Um, but drunk just as much. Yes. 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. Very high. That's based off like 100 yep. reviews as well. It's really good. Yeah. Audience score, 81%. Real high. Don't know how much it cost. What do you think it made in the Australian box office? I don't have worldwide numbers on this one. Ooh, you got the Australian box office this time. Um, I mean, this had quite a few actors that I recognised, you know. Yeah. I'm going to say it made like 52. In the Australian box office? Yes. Wow. You are overestimating Australia's love for Australia. That is true. Everyone's drunk. Um, <laughs> it made 18 million. 18 million? Okay, that's still pretty good. That is still very good for an Australian movie in Australia. Yeah. Uh, unlike the last two weeks, I've got taglines. Man's first step on the moon nearly stumbled on Earth. Mm, big grand yeah. Granger, nothing to do with Australia particularly. No, not really. Does sound like a generic comedy thing. I'm gonna give that a thumbs down. Yeah, I, don't I think want uh, I think that uh that tagline stumbled <laughs> ah. at the end there. Based on the true story of what we didn't see. Uh, um, mm? These are very confused taglines. Yeah, no, wait, based on the true story of what we didn't see, if we didn't see it, how would we know it happened? I guess we got the story. Um, mm. Although it is, I do like the sort of angle the story takes. That's a, it's a sort of behind the scenes of Apollo. Yeah. Almost, but a different behind the scenes than you'd normally see in like a documentary. Uh, still a thumbs down. I don't think that's very good. The third one you might like. Houston's other problem. <laughs> it's pretty good. I, I like that one. <laughs> that, 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 that is a good one. That's short, simple, to the point. Yep. I'll give that one a thumbs up. Yeah. And the final one is quite long, but I quite like it. Mm -hmm. As Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon, our only link was a satellite dish in rural Australia with a few bugs and a few hundred sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the sheep. Yeah. I was like, it, it does like to bring up the sheep, um, but it is, it is funny. That's a good one. Like That's that a good one. one. At least that one gets to the point. It's, you, you got to involve the Australia satellite yep. Neil Armstrong. Boom. Exactly. Bit long, though. Bit long, though. That's kind of like a trailer one. Mm, yeah, yeah. You want to you wanna concise that down. It's like, Neil Armstrong was stepping on the moon, but we were dodging sheep down in rural <laughs> down Australia. In Australia. Rural Australia. Oh, NASA's dodging sheep down in rural Australia. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. More like the National Air Force Security Australia... No. Uh, wait. Got this. The National Australian Sheep Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever taken a great high school history class? If you have, then you'd probably agree that the one thing that made it so enjoyable was your teacher. And understandably so. At their best, history teachers are vibrant storytellers, leading you on a gripping, fun, fantastic learning journey. 
But sadly, we know it can be pretty difficult to continue that journey after graduation, with no one there to be your entertaining tour guide through the world of dense, obscure historical research. Fortunately, 20 Minute History is here to help with that. It's the new podcast that aims to be your very own high school history teacher for everything you didn't learn in high school. Come join us as we explore commonly unknown histories in our informative, engaging, and amusing 20-minute episodes. It's 20-Minute History, out now on all your podcasting platforms. Uh, the synopsis, we'll get into that, although it's quite brief. But anyway, it, it opens with old man Neil. Uh, no, you're uh, you're getting confused there with possibly a different movie. This was um, Captain America after he's gone back in time and um, become an old man. You know what? Sam Neil in old man makeup does look a lot like Chris Evans in old man makeup. <laughs> it, it might just be that... All old man makeup makes you look like a generic old man, which mm, looks similar. That's true. Uh, he he goes and sees a giant semicircle of metal and is like, that's not my problem anymore. Because Chris Evans, he had to say no to a different metal sphere thing. You're, you're, you're making uh, pop culture jokes, but I don't understand them because I, I only watch films. I don't watch those oh. those theme park movies. Oh, you go and see films? I only watch Ugh. films. Gross. I I only go to cinematic experiences. Uh, you say experiences, I say theme park rides. Uh, poo poo. Oh. I only go to theatre plays. Yeah, well. That's where you can truly see an actor in their environment. An actor? Mm. I don't watch actors. I watch actors. <gasps> oh! <laughs> anyway, he's like, get away from this satellite dish, mate. You're just an old man. And Sam Neill's like, oh, I've got memories here. <laughs> if you knew, if, if you, knew you knew who you were talking to right now. <laughs> and then he's like, oh yeah, sure, sorry, I went around the wrong way. I'll go around the guest entrance. Yeah, sorry, yeah. my bad. Then we're sent back to 1969, baby. Woo! New South Wales. <laughs> nice. It opens with a kid uh, recounting a very violent version of the moon landing where he's like yeah oh neil armstrong's gonna land on the moon and then martians are gonna come out and they're gonna murderize them all and then the earth is gonna blow up ah yes murderize everyone's favorite term yeah and the teacher's like oh my god shut the fuck up (laughs) and then she she like moves on to to a different student and she's like oh i didn't do the moon landing and she's like thank god which was (laughs) which was very funny yeah um, and that's the kid that drops all the exposition we need to understand what's going on in the film as well. Yeah, it's just good. That's a clever way of doing it. Because the kid's like, there's like a telescope in parks and it's going to help broadcast the signal to the landing and keep NASA in contact with Apollo 11. And the teacher's like, wow, you sure know a lot about a thing that's going to be turned into a movie one day, kid. And then, uh, and then it cuts away. It's like, oh, well, what's we doing? We see, uh, I think it's the... President? Prime Minister, yeah. Oh, yeah, Prime Minister. Sorry, Prime Minister. He's... Because it's not the White House one. We Do we ever see... No, we don't see Nixon in this film. We don't... See, we hear him, but we don't see him. Yeah, we hear him at one point, but we don't see him. Yeah, we see the Prime Minister. He's uh, in his office, and he, like, calls an attendant, and he's like, What the hell is going on? What's all this telescope and satellite nonsense? And the guy's like... Oh, you were sent a briefing, and he's like, I don't read that shit. <laughs> it's the most accurate version of a, of a prime minister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Australia. No, no, no. It's great, because then five minutes later, he goes to a press conference, and it's like, I've always supported <laughs> our initiative into space. Yeah. This is a monumental, like, <laughs> you know. Endeavor of, of human achievement, and we will be supporting it over there. In fact, I'm so invested, I myself and the uh, American ambassador are going down to parks to oversee it personally. Yeah, and then we cut to the mayor of parks, and he's like, wow, mm. the American ambassador's coming here? That's cool. Oh, the prime minister as well. 
Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No one respects this Prime Minister, which is the way things should be here in Australia. Correct. Uh, we are introduced to the team who are manning the dish. There's four of them. We've got Sam Neill. We've got two fun Aussie lads. And then The Tick is there. Yes. Now, now, who, who are the other two actors? Did they do... They're just both from, like, Australian TV. I know them from a show called Sea Change, which they're pretty good in. Yeah, well, they were all, they were all pretty good in this film. So I'll give them credit where credit's due. You've got the, the nervous nerd. Yep. Um, you've got the... Australian outback, he gets angry at things, bloke. Yep. He doesn't like America and their guns. I oh, don't like this America. They treat us like hillbilly criminals that migrated from uh, <laughs> to the Migrated London. from England. You have the American NASA guy who's there to represent NASA. And then you have Sam Neill, who's like, I'm running everything, but oh, boo-hoo, my wife died. Oh, yeah, they try and include some, like, emotional stuff with Sam Neill that they don't really spend too much time on, but it's there. I thought it was good. Like, it was just a small moment. They had that small sort of moment. And it's, I like how they have it, like, a gradual reveal. I think that yeah. adds a bit more weight to it, even though they didn't put much emphasis on it. They had this whole, like... He's, like, married when they ask his relationship status. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't go into it, which is a bit weird. You're like, oh, what's going on there? And then later on, it's like, you can tell your missus all about it or something. And he, he like, walks off. And then one guy is like, oh, how, how are you coping or whatever? So you're like, oh, what's going on? And then it's revealed, of course, that his wife died. But his wife was all about, you know. Oh, yeah, all about NASA. Made him care about the mission. Yeah, yeah, she was all excited, and he's like, you know what, I should be excited too. I'll tell you what, though, I did- the one thing I don't like in this movie is how his birthday was the day of the moon landing. Oh, right. <laughs> that was <Yeah>. dumb. <laughs> what was that in this movie for? Uh, yeah, but it was also, like, two seconds. Unless that is a real thing, yeah. and the real guy who was running the dish, if his birthday was actually the day of the, the moon landing, then that's fine. But if they made that up for the movie- I'm like, come on. Yeah, yeah. It feels like something that they just kind of shoehorned in. So if it's made up, then it's dumb that they shoehorned it in. If it's true, then it's kind of interesting. But yeah, they still shoehorned it in. Yeah, for sure. We see some classic Aussie stuff. Uh, as you mentioned, they play the great Aussie game of cricket on the dish. Which is, a, as I said, fantastic spot to do it because it's like a big bowl. Yeah. Right? So if you if you hit it, as long as you don't hit it over the rim, which mm. would obviously be pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. But as long as you don't, it's gonna roll back to the center. You don't have to run after it. It's a good way of playing when you have less than a regular teams mm. of people. You, you're just a couple of mates, then you don't have to go run after the ball. The ball will roll back to you. You're making good points, but also just having the presence of cricket on screen made me fall asleep. <laughs> So, while the points you're making are good, it's still what? cricket on my television Unbelievable. screen. Unbelievable. How dare you, Sandro, <laughs> diss our glorious game of cricket. I love watching men in a field wearing white-brimmed hats stand around for two and a half hours. I love it. If you don't know what cricket is, particularly the American audience, it's basically baseball. It's the same sort of rules. Yeah. It's hit a ball with a stick. Yeah. And you, you run around the bases and stuff. It's just like the Australian down under version of baseball. Yeah. It's really fun to play, but just watching, I'm just like, I dislike this greatly. I, funnily enough, I can't remember what it was. I watched a game more recently. You know, I didn't really need to be there for everything. I just kind of chilled, had it on in the background. I actually rather enjoyed it. And I was like, ah, oh, maybe there is something to these sports that people watch. I don't know. I was kind of getting into it. Right. I was getting excited. Sure. It was, it, was pro it was a pretty good game, though. I think it was pretty close. One of the better ones. Yeah, right. Yeah, so, so I got a good experience from that. But yeah. There's this running joke in the movie where these two guys in town keep talking about how do they go up there in space? Yeah, 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 yeah. Going to the... And there's a funny line where they're at a, like, a potluck, a dinner party, and they're like, they probably just hold it. Oh, I couldn't hold it in for more than four days. I, re I reckon that would kind of mess me up greatly. And then this guy who's, like, 
eating a hot dog or like a cake or something just <laughs> yeah, walks by yeah, and he's yeah. like i'll tell you what i reckon they should try some of these up there it's just one bite and it'll block you up for a week <laughs> That's good. I liked when the uh, later on when the ambassador comes in and they're talking about it again, and they're like, "Oh yeah, how did they go to the?" And uh, the ambassador comes over and it's like, "What are you gentlemen talking about?" It was like, "Oh, oh, nothing." Talking about the space program, yeah. And he's like, "Oh, do any of you know where the is? I need to take a piss." You know. It's very funny. It's just it's very funny. It's all. It's very good. Very good. I liked as well just small lines like uh, the mayor is like, oh, yep, the whole town's over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> the moon. And the one guy's like, oh, over the moon. I get it. Because that's, that's the joke of the movie. They have that one guy that keeps like getting jokes late. Wasn't that the prime minister? I think that was the prime minister, right? No, um, no, it was the nerdy scientist guy does that. Oh, twice. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, um... He does that with one where they're performing an interview um, in the satellite and uh, Sam Neill's doing this whole interview thing. It's going really well. But in the background, you just have the two scientists and it's like the interviewer asks a question. Oh, and how do you uh, get the images from the moon to the satellite? And the guy in the background's like, oh, carrier pigeon. <laughs> um, and then Sam Neill explains it. And halfway through explaining it, you hear, ha, carrier pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> he just gets it then. And then they all turn and look at him and he's like, oh, his, his flaps. Of the- oh, sorry. That was pretty funny. That was good. I, I, I liked it because it was so loud. Yeah. The nerdy guy as well, he's got kind of a character arc where he's got a crush on Janine, who is this really mm. bad driver in town. Oh. She's always <laughs> running over stuff. It's like this ditzy blonde woman and it's like oh that's a little stereotypical <laughs> yeah it's pretty funny though i enjoyed that it, is it was a cute little uh, it was a good intro because she backs up into this pole and then for yes. the rest of the movie whenever they cut to that open bit in the front that pole is bent <laughs> pole is always bent yeah and i was like yeah that's a nice touch i like that I enjoyed their storyline. Also, her brother is the security guard at the dish. Mm, and for oh. some reason, he's got a gun. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how he got it. Well, well, they say they say NASA gave him a gun, which doesn't explain anything. How did he get this gun? I don't know. But, but like, everyone's concerned as to this <laughs> individual, which is fair, because he is a bit of an idiot. He is. He's always going on about, I'm in Sector 1. Except he always, like, renames which which sect. <laughs> which sector are we in now? And he's like, uh... <laughs> I changed the sectors. I'm ordering them alphabetically from top to bottom. <laughs> uh, it's still in, still in the works, though. I enjoyed all of his moments. He's a great character as well. Yes, yes, very good. There's not there's not much plot moments that happen uh, for the first kind of half hour of the film. There is a moment when there's a bit of tension between uh, the Austra- the older Australian guy, the grumpy Australian guy, and the American. Mm. There's some tension between them because the, the American, you know, he's quite well dressed, he's proper, and the Australian guy is just like walking around in, in like a yeah t-shirts and shorts, you know, Australian way. And he's like, you guys, you Americans, you treat us like a pack of galahs. And the the nerdy Australian guy is like explaining what that means to him in between the breaks in the the argument. It's good. Yeah, yeah. It's good. He he, he calls pants like dungarees or something. Dungarees, yeah. Trackadax. Trackadax, yeah. And the guys are like pants. Oh, just because I don't spend all day in a suit and bow tie doesn't mean that I'm a drongo. Mmm, oh yeah, do you know what we should bring back? Yeah, what? We should bring back Drongo and Pack of Galahs. I like Pack of Galahs a lot. I feel like Drongo... Drongo might be offensive, so let's just use Pack of Galahs. You need to bring that one back. I'm going to add a Pack of Galahs to the list because... I like it. But what context? Like, you're acting like a pack mm. of galahs. Yeah, we yeah. You just that. use it as like a as like a thing. You could use it as an insult. Yeah. You could use it as a sort of describe. Like, the cats were fighting together like a good old pack of galahs, you know? I was also thinking like, oh, yeah, on my work break, I always go out and I smoke a, a pack of galahs. <laughs> No, I don't think that works. I could bring it back, but slightly change the meaning. I feel like that's going to give off the wrong (laughs) meaning. 
Because you've changed it. It's better than the other word that we use to describe cigarettes here in Australia. The American ambassador, he arrives as well. I felt like the American ambassador was played by an Australian doing an American accent. Yeah, yeah, definitely I felt that as well. Which makes sense if they're filming this in Australia, they got an Australian actor, but... I mean, he did the job. He did the job. He did. And they have a massive party, so they watch the launch. They watch Apollo 11 go up. Yeah. And they're like, yes, the rocket ship has left the world's... And then they also go to, like, a ball in town uh, where the young band of teens refuse to play the American anthem and play, like, a Jimi Hendrix song instead. Well, I don't think they refuse. I think they made a mistake. (laughs) They, like, looked up American anthem. It's like, what's the American anthem? I don't know. It must be this song, you know? It plays (laughs) all the time on American TV. (laughs) That was quite funny. Which is very funny. But, oh no, during that party, the power goes out. I wouldn't worry about it. There's no important giant satellite tracking uh, the Apollo 11 arc through space. At the mo- oh my god, wait a minute. <laughs> what about the satellite? Oh no. Oh wait, don't worry. It should have a backup generator is all. Yeah, should have kicked in, should have kick- kicked in. Oh no, the backup generator didn't kick up. It's all gone wrong. It's because uh, cause Mr. Packer Galaz over there was acting like a Packer Galaz. Yeah. He, for- he forgot to un- uh, re-screw up the generator. Something like something. that. Some science stuff. He forgot to plug it in. <laughs> yeah, th- that sounds more like an Australian thing to do. Yeah. Just forgot to plug it in, mate. So, yeah, they've lost Apollo 11. Oh, no. All their computers have, like, reset. They've got to manually try and find where they are again to get the signal. And for some reason, Sam Neill decides not to tell NASA, hey, we've lost them and we need your help. No, he decides to do something else, Zach. Yeah, this is a very dramatic movie moment. Because later on, they talk about, like, they could have just told NASA. Yeah. And NASA probably would have been like, oh, here's their coordinates. And that would have been it, right? Yeah. Because that stuff happens all the time. But no, instead, he's like... Oh, uh, yeah, no, we're still getting the signal. You're not getting it. Must be a connection issue. Uh, Maybe you got a pack of glass down there in NASA. Yeah, you fucking idiots. <laughs> Click. <laughs> um, and then he's like, well, that should give us some time. Um, yeah, let's try and fix this, eh? <laughs> try and manually fight. Yeah, let's try and manually uh, triangulate where uh, Neil Armstrong is. Good old Buzzy Aldrin. The other one. The third one. Who was the third one? I don't remember. Me neither. I feel bad, because I tried to remember his name, but I, I still forgot it. Oh, Michael Collins. Michael Collins. He's the third one. Doesn't help that he has the most generic name. Oi, the other two are- Don't you be dissing my boy Michael Collins. Michael is one of the most common names ever, and Collins is pretty common, not super common. Whereas, I only know one Buzz, and one- Armstrong. I know many Armstrongs. You do? And I, I know a whole family of Armstrongs. I only know one Neil. Anyway, we get the line, we get the line, the classic line that I think you wanted to say because you kept saying it before we started recording. Um, yeah, so we get the, the quote where the um, mayor of the town is talking with good old Sam Eboy and he's like, you remember the back in the day when uh, they made the contract? With NASA yes. being part of their program. And uh, the contract was just simply, we accept NASA's proposition. Mm. And it was like, that was a wonderful moment. And Neil's like, this isn't. And uh, the mayor's like, no, this is a shit house moment. <laughs> that was very funny. That was very funny. I also enjoyed, um, I think he tells the other guys in the dish as well. And they're like, what? You told them we still got the signal. That's bullshit. You just bullshitted NASA. Yeah, you just bullshitted NASA. And then the NASA representative comes back and he's like, what the heck? You bullshitted NASA? <laughs> You're an idiot, mate. Yeah, why Why couldn't we just tell NASA and then they give us the coordinates? Forget being in a pack of galahs. It's more like I'm in a pack of Tasmanian devils. Ooh. Because you're from the worst part of Australia, Tasmania. Mm, the worst sometimes part of Australia. <laughs> this is a joke, by the way. People, <laughs> if you listen from Tasmania, we, uh, we appreciate you a lot. Uh, and at least you're not from the Northern Territory. Oh, yeah, that's way worse. Um, so, so, 
then they're like, nah, we can fix this. We can work this out. We just need more time. There's the funny scene as well when the American ambassador comes over to visit. Oh, yes. To get him out of the room. They're like, oh, it's about that time when we've got to talk to Neil Armstrong. Mm. And he's like, oh, can I stay and hear Neil's voice? So... Patrick Warburton and one of the Australian guys, they go into another room to pretend to be NASA and Neil Armstrong. The Australian guy pretends to be Neil Armstrong. Yeah, yeah. And puts on the dumbest voice. It's great. And the senator's like, oh my god. that uh, It was like I was standing in the room with Neil Armstrong. <laughs> it was that clear. It was that clear. That was very funny. They they do a load of calculations. They yeah. do these big calculations trying to find him. Eventually, they're like, this isn't going to work. We're just going to have to give up. But luckily on that day, the moon is out. Yeah. It's one of those cl- classic Australian days when the moon is visible. Yeah. Which happens, by the way. That does happen. Yeah, it does, it, that does happen. That does happen. It's just like, oh, the, is this how they would triangulate? Surely they... they know the position of the moon, right? Even if it isn't visible in the sky. And it's kind of their main job to watch the moon. Although I guess it's more like just a telescope in general, so they're kind of looking everywhere. But of all people, surely they should know where the moon is and therefore could triangulate without seeing it outside. But then they go, oh, we see the moon there. Oh, wait, we could use the moon to triangulate the position because we know where we are. We know where the moon is currently. We could triangulate the position because where Neil would be and uh, the uh, good old Apollo 11. And so they move the telescope and bam, they get a connection. And whoa, uh, they inform NASA and NASA's like, yep, all good our end. Good work. They never say, Houston, we have a problem. That's one thing that I would add to this movie mm. is one Houston, we have a problem joke. Maybe that that is the obvious joke, though, and it was quickly shot down in the writer's room. Probably. Probably the person um, who was there was told they were like a big old pack of glass and and promptly executed on the spot. Which is what we do here in Australia. Yes. Well, every everyone has a good old bushwhacker on them at all times, you know, Wait, just in case they have to go through. Yeah, yeah, big machete. Oh, yeah, now we got heaps of bushwhackers. Yeah, yeah, good old bushwhacker. Obviously, Sandra, you knew that because you're Australian. I knew that because I live in Australia. Just in case you have to go out back through the bush area, no, take a shortcut, whatever, have to fend off any giant spiders, you know, you just got to keep a big old knife. And then, of course, if someone makes a bad joke in a riotous room, you just got to execute them on the spot. You will pull out your machetes. It's a bit like the execution of uh, Augustus Caesar. Bloody struth, mate. Bloody struth. It's moon landing time. Whoa! Everyone's excited. They're all gathering together. The president gets offered tea, and then the lady pours, like, scotch into the, his... The prime minister, mate. The prime minister. A prime minister. Prime minister, oh, I'll yeah. tell you what, he was basically acting like a bloody president. Tell you that much. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I always get those two confused. Yeah, no, he's like, oh, you, you're going to give me some whiskey, bloody grouse, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. She's like, more tea. And then she pours this, <laughs> this whiskey in, and he's like, oh, thank you. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's my prime minister. The thing is, though, the, the, the problem, though, is that there's wind. There's massive wind, oh, and it's no. going to be dangerous. To get the telescope into position to broadcast the moonwalk. So they all agree. They're like, you know, this could be dangerous, but we're all agreeing to do it. Yep. And so they they do it. They uh, start moving it and it sort of creaks around. You see the like knots of the wind Mm. increase. So at first it's 15 and they're like, oh, that's pretty windy. We don't like that. Then it's 30, which is like the theoretical maximum. And then it goes up to 60, but they still they still manage to pull it off. They still manage to point it at yep. the moon. And they get their transmissions from the moon landing. And we get to watch a little bit of the moon landing. Yep. Good old one small step for man, one giant leap for podcasting kind. Yep. And Stanley Kubrick, he did a great job directing that moon landing. Yeah. I tell you what, it really feels like you're there on the moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. I know that it's all fake. It's all on a set. Yeah, But, yeah. like, woo. Good work. This is this has got to be one of the best propaganda movies <laughs> for for um the moon landing. Exactly. 
and it didn't really push any political opinions on me either. They weren't oh. like, like Neil Armstrong wasn't really like, oh yeah, the earth is flat. Like, as we all know, the earth is yeah. flat and the moon landing was fake, but the movie never really told no, you that. No, no, no. But um, there was that one girl with her political opinions. She was very funny. Didn't she call the prime minister a fascist at one point? Yes, yes. Um, and she kept asking uh, the American uh, NASA guy, she was like, does the CIA really fund NASA? And he's like, not all of it. <laughs> and she was like, what? And he's like, no, I'm joking. Uh, the whole thing about the moon landing being fake and uh, the Earth being flat was a joke. Wait, you were joking? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, because oh, no. I was as well. Thank goodness. Oh, oh, oh thank oh, Yeah, you know, no. For a second there, I thought we were going to be a bloody pack of galahs on Twitter. Getting oh, oh, no. Galahed. Yeah, it's kind of sad hearing the stories of Armstrong having to deal with people running up to him and being like, the moon landing was fake, you're an actor, or you're a shill, you know? Yeah. That sort of thing. And it's like, that one time where he punched someone. Did he? Because they tried to do- Yeah, Armstrong's an absolute gangster. He, like, got so fed up with people doing this. Literally, one guy was, like, constant pestering, so he just socked him in the face. <laughs> oh, man. That sounds like something that Aldrin would do, but I can't really picture Armstrong doing that. Oh, it might have been Buzz. It might have been Buzz. Um, I don't know. No, it was Buzz Aldrin. Yeah, oh, it was okay. Buzz Aldrin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 72-year-old <laughs> lost his temper and fucking socked him in the <laughs> face. Good on him. <laughs> I knew Buzz Aldrin. That was like, what, 20 years ago then? Because he's in his 90s now. So Yeah, yeah, damn, yeah. Good on him. What an absolute gangster. What a mad lad. Absolute mad lad. And that's pretty much the end of the movie. Uh, after the moon landing, we cut back to, to old man Captain America mm. being asked to uh, to leave parks. And then we get credits. Oh, and we get, like, the the classic. This was based off a true story. The thing couldn't have happened without Australia. Duh, 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 duh. We won't even mention the third telescope that actually existed and helped out. Mm. We won't mention that. That's not important for our story. I like the very ending, though. And to this day... The satellite is still part of NASA mm. and is still in the middle of a sheep paddock. And you can visit it. You can get over there now and you can go say hi. Was it in the middle of a sheep paddock? I, I can't remember there being any sheep around, but it is in the middle of just a paddock. In the middle of a paddock, yeah. It's not built up. It's just like a place where you have to drive to get to. Yeah. Then you go in there and there's a cafe and stuff. And this was a good movie. That's The Dish. Look, it's good. Yeah. It's really good. It's light on plot, but I tell you what, it's bloody heavy on bloody jokes, mate. Yeah, it's good. I like I like this movie. It's a very wholesome, fun movie. This is like a family movie that I'd like to watch again mm. because it's like, it has a few like adult jokes. It's a bit of swearing. Yeah, it's got a bit of swearing because it's like an Australian family one. It's got the Prime Minister drinking and, you know, <laughs> yeah. like lying through his teeth. You know, it's it's good. It's, it's, it's very real in that sense. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's enjoyable for the whole family. It is. It's a lot of fun. I would recommend this to anyone, especially if you are interested in the moon landing and mm. stuff. 100% check this out. Uh, it's really solid. And also highly recommend The Castle, which is the film that the director made before this. They're yeah. both really good. Probably do like a double feature. Watch them both back to back. Get True Blue Aussie Mate for an evening. Yeah. Have some VBs on hand if you can get them wherever you are. If not, just a furphy. Yeah. I hate furphy, actually. I wouldn't recommend <laughs> a furphy. Have you tried their furphy lager? Uh, I don't think I have, actually. Uh, I haven't either, and I won't eat. <laughs> I probably won't. <laughs> the, the only time I've ever had furphy is, like, at a concert. Because that, that's the only thing that they serve at concerts, is, like, a furphy or Red Bull and vodka. And I'm like, well, I don't want to die, so I'll have a furphy. Mm, yeah, no, that's fair. But, yeah, solid goodie from me. How about you? Oh, absolutely. This is, this is, this is a goodie of a movie. This is, this is one of those gems... In the Australian rough. In the Australian outback. 
Hello, music fans. Gordon Lightfoot is one of the greatest folk rock artists of all time, and now there's a podcast celebrating and discussing his work song by song. It's called Carefree Highway Revisited, and every episode, your host, that's me, Mike Messner, will examine one of Gordon's songs with the help of a special guest. So, if that's your cup of tea, give us a listen and give us a follow wherever you get your listening matter. That's Carefree Highway Revisited, a proud member of the That's that's not canon podcast network. All right. Well, then, with two goodies for the dish, it means we've got to move on to the crossover segment, which mm. is where we take one random movie from the plethora of films that we have covered here in the podcast. We take one of them uh, and we do a crossover bet- between that movie and this movie. It's all helped out by a random number generator. Whichever number it lands on uh, determines the movie that we do. Number. 85. So which movie we covered on episode 85 is what we're going to be crossing over. That's that's pretty good. That's a bit uh, earlier. It's 1984. Yeah. Well, I was thinking it's 1984 and then I saw episode 84 was Dreamscape, which was kind of a sci-fi and I was like, that would work. But no, no, 85 is Wheels on Meals. Mm. Jackie Chan, comedy action film. Ah, well, still a comedy though. Mm. Two comedy films can sort of blend that together. How? <laughs> oh, that's easy, Sandro. Easy, Sandro. So this is a bit like that scene in The Martian where they have to rely on uh, China to supply the, like, rocket booster for oh, that yeah. backup thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a bit like that. So instead of, like, a true story... Uh, Because I'm probably going to have to throw that one out the window. Uh, Yeah, it's a bit. It's a. It's going to be a bit like this, where um, uh, NASA once again having trouble. They don't have uh, like a booster or something, but they need this resource, and the only people who have it is China. China have it. Although the original movie took place in Hong Kong, though, so I guess maybe they're visiting China. Oh yeah. Okay. Or in Hong Kong, that works. You know. So they uh, need to send someone. And so they send up people who are slightly closer to there to sort of come and get it. They send up uh, the NASA division in the Outback Mm. uh, because they're much closer to China than America and other places. So So do they send the four guys from this movie? Let's say Patrick Warburton, he decided to stay in Australia. He loved it so much he moved to parks. No, I'm just saying... Uh, Sam and the Tick. Yeah, okay. Uh, go up. So not the other two. Ah, uh, but the other two are funny though. Like they're the real kind of comedy. They are, but we're gonna have just the famous actors. Fine. I hate this, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you don't have to like it because we we just need the star power for this one. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um. So they're going to come in and they're going to meet up with the uh, space program representatives, Jackie Chan and his brother. But they they own a restaurant. If you don't know what Wheels on Meals is about, it's about Jackie yep. Chan and his friends. They run a food truck. Except I just remembered that food truck, that movie takes place in Spain. So I guess they went back to China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they take down like a gang in Spain. Well, if you let me finish my explanation sorry, sorry, as to I'm, how they I'm got just, there, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is the whole flashback point. So what happens is they have to go into witness protection from Spain, from their restaurant, right? Oh, because Spain's trying to kick them out because they're like, you just did a bunch of crime yeah. and you killed a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're, they're international criminals at this point. But then the Spanish crime bosses come in and so... Sam Neill, the tick, Jackie Chan, and his brother have to go after them. This sounds terrible. Because <laughs> yeah, Sam yeah. Neill well, and, like, pa- well, Patrick can do some acting, but Sam Neill definitely can't do action. Like, he's not that sort of actor. Um, so I guess he's the man in the van cracking jokes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he could drive, right? We know he could drive. So he's definitely there. they're, like... It, it turns out none of the rest of them have a license. None of them know how to drive. Oh, Jackie Chan actually drove in the first one. Yeah. And then there's funny martial arts action mixed in with Australian humour. 
yeah, yeah. Oh, and American, because Neil pulls out like a revolver at one point. Oh, like, yeah. It, 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 it will have that. It will have that Indiana Jones scene where the yep. one guy has like instead of a blade, it's like super kung fu. Yeah. And and Jackie Chan's like, oh my god, he's a master kung fu. I don't think I can beat him. I think we're screwed here, guys. And and then he just pulls out a gun and goes bang and shoots him, <laughs> shoots him in the chest. And the guy goes, ah. So this is a truly international movie. Yes. Where it's an Australian and Hong Kong co-production set in China. Yeah. Also starring Americans and Spanish people. Yeah. Absolutely. I love it. Truly international. And do you know who, what that means, right? What does that mean? It means the soundtrack's done by Mr. Worldwide himself. Ah, uh, Pitbull! <laughs> yeah, the most international man in existence. Wait, hang on. Almost 16 years passed between the release of Wheels on Meals and the release of The Dish. Yeah? We actually haven't talked about that when we do crossovers. Long periods of time pass between a film that takes place in the 80s and a film that takes place in the early 2000s. So I guess Jackie Chan would be a bit older now. Yeah, well, a lot of time has passed since those events, you know? They they joined up with NASA and stuff, you know? Look, sounds fine. It's called Wheels on the Dish Go Round and Round. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Oh, absolutely. The, the, the ending scene is they come back and then they use the dish to roll a blade round and round and round oh, they while roll they're blade. playing yeah, cricket. Yeah, while they're playing cricket on rollerblades. Yeah, they roll around it and so they can catch the ball super quickly. Mate. And then, like... And then you have the two Australian actors from the f- from from the movie, there, and that guy's like, "Wow, this is shit house. I don't want to play this anymore. We keep losing." That is that film that I would probably watch. I guess next segment. All right. Well, it's time for river 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 rotten reviews. Yeah, mate. It's part of the show where I get reviews not from the critics of Rotten Tomatoes, but the audience. Why do I pick the audience? Because the audience is always right. In this case, the audience was rather boring. Mm. We watched a really good film, um, so most of them were positive. But I got a couple. I'll tell you the thing. You guess the score. You know how it goes. Evie. It's between 0.5 and 5. I wasn't going to mention that because obviously the audience already knows that, so I didn't need to explain. I don't that. think they did. What? Uh, but uh, surely I've explained it every other time that you have to pick between zero point five and five. And, five. Uh, and let me tell you, the reviewers—they're a real pack of glass. Oh, they are. They are. Um, like Evie. Evie, who says, "Solid, nothing more." Solid. Nothing more. That makes me think it's a three, because solid nothing more, it's like, it's good, but it's not great. And I feel like that's a three out of five. That's really close. It's a two and a half. It's oh, wow. straight down the middle. That's a rotten rating. That is a rotten rating. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't like that. That's not true. That's not the true blue Aussie spirit that I come to Rotten Tomatoes looking for. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. Connor has you backed up. He's got that Aussie spirit right there. He says, I have been to the place and it's very good. <laughs> this guy has also been to parks. Let's go. Connor. And he speaks in all caps. <laughs> yes. I, I wonder if he was there in the two in the tour group when I went. Maybe he was. Maybe we shared a long neck VB. Mm, maybe, maybe. Uh, five out of five because it's all caps. Of course he is. Because he's a true, true truth in Australian bloke. <laughs> yes, brother. And then the last one we have is Lauren, who says, kind of hooky, but my dad would like it a lot. What does hooky mean? Is that a str- I've never heard that before. Kind of, kind of hooky? I've heard that one before. Hooky is a thing. Hooky, yeah, kind of hooky. But hooky is more for, like, music. No, H-O-K-E-Y. Hooky. Okay. Oh, H-O-K-Y. Yep. Oh, I see. Uh, I don't know. My dad would like it. 2.5 out of 5. Oh, close again, but it's 2 out of 5. Oh, it's, it's even, even lower. even more negative. Well, anyway, we'll wrap it up right there. Uh, this has been a pretty fun episode, I reckon. Yeah, this is a pretty fun movie. 
It's always good whenever we talk about Australian movies. And I know yeah. one of our Australian patrons actually mentioned something to me and was like, you guys should do a whole year of just Australian stuff. And I was like, that could Ooh, be fun. That could be fun. That could be pretty fun. Thank you so much for listening and, and enjoying the show. Uh, if you like the show and want to help us out, if you want to help us get our show out in front of more ears, mm. chuck us a review on bloody Apple Podcasts, mate. That helps. Spotify as well. You can rate the show on Spotify. Uh, we are on YouTube as well. We're on uh, Facebook.com forward slash Oldie Buddy Goody Pod. Instagram at Oldie Buddy Goody Pod. Personal Instagrams are there. Check those out. I'm on Twitter. Uh, and if you want bonus episodes, Patreon.com forward slash Oldie Buddy Goody Pod. Get that bonus episode, Uncharted versus Resident Evil. Very fun. Very fun. Very fun. And coming up at the end of the month, we're finally wrapping up our series of... Police Academy with the seventh one. Oh god, I, I keep forgetting that's coming up. That's coming up in what, two weeks? Uh hopefully international tensions can ease, because that film is of mm. course set in Russia. Oh yeah, that's so could we'll be see. <laughs> interesting. Well, that's a Patreon though, right? It's Patreon, so we can talk as much political garbage as we want. Oh, that might be a spicy episode. Then. Ooh. Uh, all the links to that are in the episode description. Also, make sure you check out Josh Cake, who made our theme music. Oh, yeah. What a what a what an Australian bloke there. Now that's a right standing up individual. Oh, Josh, we love Josh. Good on ya, Josh. Ya bloody legend. He he's got zero galas on him. <laughs> no, <laughs> Josh K's got no galas. And if you want to go to a galar free podcast network, <gasps> check out other shows from That's Not Canon Productions. Well, we cannot confirm nor deny if there are galas in uh, these podcasts. Some of them may contain galas. Some of them might actually have a galar co-host. But that might improve it. I would love to mm. l- listen to a show if you can teach your galar to talk. Your parrot to talk. And then you do a show and your parrot's your co-host. Oh, oh, that would be good to have a parrot, like, maybe not as your only co-host, but as, like, just in the background saying things. (laughs) That'd be pretty funny. You set up a little mic for him that he can speak into? Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. And every time you do a joke, he, like, he goes, funny. (laughs) Oh, no, no. I don't know. That's the sitcom level of adding a clap track. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Funny! Funny! <laughs> that's exactly what it is. It's it's the yeah. it's the clap sign that they have on sitcoms. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway, uh, that's the episode. Thank you so much for listening. You've got to pick our next movie, Zacharoony. Oh, yeah, that's me. I forgot. You've got four films that came out next week oh, in 2001. Strength. Got to pick one that we're going to cover. Your first option is called The Brothers... Four African-American men embark on a hilarious journey of love and friendship. Oh, hate that. I hate love and friendship. You do. Move on. You really hate it. How about Heartbreakers? That's the opposite of love and friendship. Mmm, that's true. It's about a mother and daughter con artist team, played by Sigourney Weaver and Jennifer Love Hewitt. They attempt to swindle Gene Hackman, the actor of Lex Luthor, out of his money. Whoa, Okay. Say it ain't so, a couple discover that they are actually brother and sister, and so they have to break up, naturally. What? When it turns out they weren't, but uh uh-oh, the other is getting married, one of the couple has to try and stop the marriage to let the other one know that, hey, we're not related and we can get married, actually. What? (laughs) What the fuck is that film? I have no idea. They find out their brother and sister. They go, oh, crap, and break up. That's awful. Yeah. That's devastating. And then they find out they're not, in fact, so they can get back together. Surely, at that point, it's unreconcilable, you know? I feel like just the the, the general knowledge of we thought we were related would probably ruin yeah. anything between them. Yeah, but maybe not. And your final option is called Wit. A renowned professor is forced to reassess her life when she's diagnosed with cancer. That sounds depressing. Mm, which one are you picking then? <laughs> Thing is, I was looking for a bad film again. Because you want to do a choice. bad film? Oh, absolutely. I want to throw oh, a spanner in the works. Don't you dare pick Say It Is. <laughs> don't you dare pick the incest movie. I feel like that could be a fun podcast. We're going to need to reassess your definition of the word fun 
after we wrap up recording. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Ooh, I'm not looking forward to it. Let's wrap it up with the best quote from The Dish. I actually forgot to mention mine. There's a scene when the security guard guy, he's sneaking around at night and he's like, who goes there? And it's just Sam Neill. And he's like, oh, it's just me, mate. Don't worry about it. And so the security guard keeps on walking. A couple seconds later, he hears something outside and he's like, stop. Who goes there? I will shoot. And all he hears is, bah! <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's a good joke. That's a good one. Uh, my favorite was um, they are describing why they need a satellite here and how they're working with NASA. Uh, the nerdy guy goes up to his, his female crush and he's like, well, he tries to explain it. So imagine a basketball and um, uh, what's the what's the bit that you connect a uh, pump to? And the other scientist goes, a hole? <laughs> It's like, I know it's a hole. I know it's a hole, but it has a name. It has a name. What's the name? And the, the, the valve, the valve. Uh, so imagine there's a valve on top and a valve on the bottom. And the other guy's like, well, there's a basketball. Don't have a valve on the bottom. And it's like, yeah, well, what, 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 what thing has two valves on it? And it's a spherical shape. And then the lady's like, you know what? I get it. I understand it now.